And um, yeah, I put some N scale corrugated iron in there. Uh, some of the PVA pulled into these cardboard window bits and that looks nice, I left it. I think I said in hindsight that um, I would um, probably, if I had more time, um, do that in every single one of those tiny window bits. If I zoom right in. That's it. And so the, the PVA pulls up. So it, those little window bits in there aren't MDF. They are, oh, it's recording now or something. Oh, it's probably going to switch you off too. No, it's okay. We're good. We're good, I think. Yeah, it's cardboard inside that forms those window frames. And the PVA wood white glue pulls into those sections on there. So... Um, if I had more time, I would have pulled it into every one of those little bits and it, they look like literally tiny lenses because the PVA wood glue dr dries clear and it looks like you've got tiny lenses all the way through there. As it happens, I'm going to put plastic sheeting behind all of these once I've done all the airbrushing and painting up and um, it'll still look interesting because it'll look like these are broken panes or something with, a, with the plastic glass behind the whole lot with obscured by the uh, black bits on there. I'm going to do it on the top as well. Um, as far as painting goes, straight onto the painting. So this top section, that, um, everything's got a bit tighter now because um, obviously it's had PVA primer on everything, watered down, white wood glue, I painted on everything on the baseboard, or inside, loads of it inside actually, lashings, um, and it just all dries out and gives you a rock solid um, surface to paint on, spray on. So I'm going to do this as like a, an... Um, a red oxide kind of roofing colour with um, kind of silvered and then rusted um, corrugated iron. And this bit, which I made separately onto there, it's not been painted underneath, but just sprayed all on top. Um, I'll do the same with the red oxide matched here. And then the actual whole miniature model, I'm going to do in a kind of, I'm going to start with uh, a khaki brown, and then I'm going to just sort of airbrush up with sand. And then I happen to have, and you can get these on Amazon actually in various other places. Some people actually a while ago, they did these. Look, TT Combat did this stencil. But another option is to go to Amazon and look for various aluminium sheets or any other hardware provider and they do these. I actually bought that sheet off Amazon um, just as a tester. It's probably about a pound, dollar fifty or something. And I had ideas for like using it on sort of surfaces, so actually literally cutting it and trimming it as an interesting surface, but actually it's just as good also for airbrushing through if you want to put some shapes on. So I'm probably going to do that in little patches for no reason but to sort of detail it up really, make it look a bit sci-fi given that it's it's quite sort of um, 20th century warehouse with augmented bits and pieces. So yeah, these are GZG, um, just bits of gubbins that they do on there um, and I did the same on the extra piece which is this one I made the chimney section look a bit more sci-fi still got a ladder up the side um, but there you go so because it's going to take a long time to airbrush the whole lot I'm going to do it in components obviously that because I said I wanted that red oxide on here before I put the panes of glass in on that skylight section get that out of the way uh, this one, well, it would go mostly the same colour as the rest of it with some detailing. Um, I think this is from Zinge. Zinge Instruments, Zinge Industries or something in the UK. Hopefully they'll be at salute. But they, they've been doing a range of 20 mil Gaslands car vehicle add-on pipes and things. And one of the sets they do is a set of mini speakers. I couldn't resist them. Um, you know, some guys are s sitting around up here. Why not listen to some music while they're at it? But... Anyway, anything that looks vaguely 15 mil and, and interesting, I've gone for. So I've got a couple of speakers tucked around on here. So I'm going to airbrush this one first because this is, um, interestingly, throughout this whole process, I've always used this one as the sort of tester. So I would, um, uh, if I was doing some interesting bits of gubbins like these things on here or some extra plating I did it on here as a trial first and then and then and then went to the main unit so it's just been handy as a uh, as a separate plate so I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to attempt to airbrush 
I think, like I said, I was going to go with the darker of these two colours, which is slightly this one, because I didn't want to go on too light. So also, so that's the car key, but I'm also going to put some of the flow improver in as well. So the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, bring the airbrush over here. I'm using, oops, I'm using the Iwata HPM one, which is like this st stub stubby one, kind of the Uzi of the um, uh, submachine gun of the um, airbrush world. And um, it's connected up to uh, a compressor down underneath and has a one of these things that's meant to clear the moisture, but it doesn't really ever get any moisture in it. But I think that's because I don't live in the swamps of uh, Memphis in the deep south um, where they get a lot of uh, humidity. So I've been thinking about pulling that out because it just is a hindrance, actually, this long... Because I've got a quick release there. Um, but I'll probably get rid of that at some point. Rambling now. So, right. Uh, I'll get this one out of the way. Have a bit of water while I'm at it. And shake. You know I want one of those shakers now. Um, especially for old paints like this, it's going to come out just crappy. It's been in my garage for like two or three years. It's not too bad. I'll tell you what I've noticed. It's a bit of a negative, I know. Sorry for sorry to AK Interactive. Um, AK Interactive, who do a lot of this airbrush stuff for the people that do the 135th scale modelling and also they do weathering pigments and things. All their products I've really, over the years, had issues with. Look, the Vallejo, it kind of stays as one colour. Even You know, you had to shake it up still, but their stuff just separates after about a year if you don't use it. You can shake it and it starts to come to life, but the pigment becomes so solid at the bottom. AK, sorry guys, you just don't work. I mean, it might be great out off the shelf, but, um, and this is the new formula developed just in their own factory and it separates and you end up with a blob at the bottom that just doesn't mix back up. But let's say, maybe if I had one of those machines and a really strong wrist action, I don't know where I'd get that from. So, yeah, so I'm going to basically, what I tend to do is, because I dread the dreaded airbrush blocking situation, which does happen even been airbrushing now for, I've had one for about 12 years, and I got one at my 40th, I got an Iwata to sort of upgrade. I put, uh, obviously I should keep that out of the way so I don't put stuff all over it, but put a drop or two of the flow enhancer in just first, and before I put the Clegg of the um, khaki brown in, I should really clean that lid, shouldn't I? Let me get rid of that gunk in case some of that drops in. The other day I did, because this is when you're not prepared or anything, I'm pretty much never prepared, but I did a video on the airbrush and um, I used two coloured paints that were almost identical and I tried to show shading and it's just a total waste of time. Um, but yeah, I tend to go in with quite a lot because it's the, um, uh, it's a building, so I'm going to need a lot of paint and then a few drops in there. So to save time and energy and, you know, just not to go over too many different colours, I would, um, for example, I said I was going to do that roof panel in the kind of red oxide, uh, reddish terracotta, and then I can rust it up and weather it a bit, brown wash on it as well. Uh, to separate the roof really looking like it's a metal framework, I'll use that same uh, red, uh, which I did pick some out, I don't know where I've put them, but yeah, I'll use the same red um, to do this steel framework um, on the side there too. So um, that whole ladder structure and everything underneath it for the steps will be the same colour, with a wood planking, obviously. We could have metal planking. Um, yeah, so I nearly poured paint over it. That's another risk for all of these uh, airbrushes. So I have a lid there, pop that on. This is a 0 0.3 nozzle. Um, and did you see I use the I use my cocktail sticks? I mean, you've just got to have a pot of these at all times. I mean, they're my go-to for all 
paint, mixing, getting rid of blockages on airbrushes, anything. I have a, oh, and glue application, cocktail sticks, perfect. So, right, so I'm going to put that in its rest, and that's another reason, right, I tell you, you've got to get, if you get into airbrushes, you've got to get a stand. So where are you going to put that now? I mean, it's got a lid, but it still has a hole. If I left that now on its side, the whole thing's just going to go all over the place. So I've got a little stand over here, which isn't in view, sadly, but I'll put it over there. And then I'm going to put my, I'm going to switch using that one. And I'm going to put my mask on. And also the extractor's going on. You may or may not hear it. See what, if I put, if I paint that, I can probably hear. Can you hear that? That's the noise of the extractor. I'm just putting my mask on. Yeah, so I'm in the mask and it's a, it's a real hassle. And we've also got a bit of crap coming on there. What is that? Okay, so I'm masked up and I'm now ready to go. So you can probably hear me through the mask. Okay, so... Drops in to see what's what. Hello, Robbie. So, uh, one last thing. Just want to make sure the uh, camera is close enough. Sorry, I keep bashing this with the mask. You've got on these ones like a this kind of opens the valve for the paint. So as you can see, you keep handy a bit of white tissue so you can see that you actually got paint coming out. This is especially true if you are painting onto black. And like I said earlier, I wish I'd gone grey uh, because black's just, just awful on a building. It's games workshop style, you know. If you go with black, it's going to end up looking dark gothic. So I can tell I've got my pressure too high, so I'm going to adjust it. So given how crappy the light is here, you probably can't even see that, but I will show you in a minute when I'm up close.
another adjustment on the camera coming up. Sorry about that. Back with the airbrush. So there you go, when I came straight back to that airbrush, whacking the uh, thing, there's some big old blobs on there, because the first time you spray it, if you haven't used it for a few seconds even, it, uh, it can spray off some bloblets. Lighting here, sorry. Paint's getting a bit low. Put a bit more in there. Hi Hugh, hi Craig, Harley, Eli, Todd. So I've just run out of paint. Yeah, just put a drop more in there. And you've got to have this flow improver. I mean, you're just going to you're going to clog up every five minutes if you haven't put a bit of that in there. Um, and the mix ratio, I don't know really. It's five parts paint to one part. Put 
flow enhancer, something along those lines. Cocktail stick. The airbrush is just going to clog up if you haven't got this flow improver. This is the, probably the best one I've found, the Vallejo one. Other options are you can use those uh, paints like the um, Tamiya ones and uh, the alcohol thinners works with that really well. So yeah, just topping up with a bit of paint and then I'll switch back to that view. Yeah, so it's gone on okay, uh, despite it being black, and I'm a bit annoyed by it being black, but uh, I think I said earlier that uh, I prefer grey based primer.
So I've got some paint left, so I'm going to go on the other one. Uh, so that's that load of paint done. And uh, rather than continue, I'm going to turn it off. And then have a look close up at what's been done so far. So that's all the gubbins turning off. I've got my, my compressor was just refilling itself. It's a reservoir type one. In fact, I can show you that, so it's still on that camera. I can take that camera off there. What? There it is. It's a Bambi uh, compressor and it has, I shall kick it. In there it has, um, a reservoir and it has oil filled uh, oil filling at the top that you have to do to keep the pressure up and um, yeah, you've got a valve thing here that controls the pressure so my pressure was just I think less than one bar or one bar I think that's called like 20 psi isn't it something like that so probably about 17 psi down there yeah and then this is the um, internal extractor. In fact, I need to bring it up by about a foot because I'm having to, I'm, I'm ducking in underneath this to do the airbrush and it's not great. So you know as you set your rig up like this, you have to sort of fiddle about a bit. So, yeah. But it's not bad that as a, you know, I've got enough room in there to get in with the building. But I do, just if I had this up about another foot, probably help me out. Right, so actually that reminds me, I need to get that paint out of there quick. So I've taken my mask off, although I'm going to turn the extractor back on for this bit. So what I do to get the paint out is I use this uh, water spray. Uh, any good water spray thing will do. And then just into the... Uh, into the reservoir, a high pressure sort of thing. Because you don't, um, it's a schoolboy error I made when I first started airbrushing. If there was some paint left that I wasn't using, I would pour in thinners or cleaners and then just spray the gunk out. And unfortunately what airbrush cleaner does to paint is turn it into a kind of a, a goo which is easy to clean off, but not when you're blowing it through the uh, reservoir. So then I keep this handy, and then you just spray the water out there. Open it wide open. And then I've got the, I've got the water coming out. Oh, and if you get any jams, if you put your finger on the end, it will bubble up. And then just keep going. And blam, blammo, I've got my air coming out of there now, well, water. And then I might use a bit of tissue paper in there just to clean it out. And what you find, water, most often, unless you're doing a full clean-up, water just gets rid of the paint. Um, where it won't get rid of it is on the needle. Um, on the end there, you'll get some build-up around the needle and the nozzle. And that, but I let that dry actually, and then I just peel it off. 
because it's acrylic, you know it goes rubbery. So now I'm going to turn off the uh, machine. Here it comes. That's it, done. I need my glasses back on, I can't see. Right, glasses back on. Change the location. I can see a new comment. Oh, quite a few new comments. I use a mix of water, out isopropyl, and glycerine as a flow improver. A one, one mix, one part regular Vallejo to two parts flow improver. A fraction of the price. Well, this one I've had for a long time. Um, and I have got a bottle of isopropyl stuff, but the, the rubbing alcohol, isn't it? And um, I tend to use that with a Tamiya. I didn't like what it was doing with these paints, but I guess it was fine. I mean, it's whatever you want to go for if that's your plan and budget, Craig. I mix, use my finger over the end to create bubbles in the pot. Yes, that's just what I was doing. And heavy metal really helps the whole process. Lots of laugh, yeah. If you didn't need the thinning, you would not be getting much for your money, chap. I use one, 10 drops glycerin, two, three distilled water. That's a, that's a chemical mix for, that could be explosive. <laughs> the alcohol spray though, I mean, yeah, you could get drunk on that. So have we got the view up yet? It's not switched the camera view. That's no good. Or maybe the stream's, stream's frozen. Not getting any switching. That took me some time to work that out. Don't know why the, the switching stopped working. Another problem with uh, Facebook, perhaps. Anyway, so that's the first attempt on it. And as you can see, it's come up okay. What was I using? Khaki brown or the green brown? Khaki brown. So that's the khaki brown on black. And... Um, where I, a couple of points to make. Um, I'm, there's a little brickwork strip on the bottom and they've only done that on the bottom because otherwise you had to laser the whole thing. Um, it would get a bit messy. Um, not messy, it would just take ages for them to laser cut something if the, every, uh, every section of brickwork was shown all the way up and etched in. I may go around that with like a stripe of brown along the bottom. Where there's overspill on the ground, that doesn't matter to me because I'll be doing this last I'll be doing this like a grey, slate grey kind of colour for the there, and I'll be able to, with the airbrush, going quite close up against the edge of the building. Um, I will also do some weathering. I've got Tamiya smoke colour and various other uh, thin um, airbrush colours that you can spray on and they're sort of dirty up around the bottom. And obviously the next level, which I'm not going to do tonight, but the next thing would be to go on with a highlight, which will go along the, the edges of everything. And then finally there will be kind of dry brushing and things on this as a final step. But this is just blocking in the base colour. It doesn't go into all the nooks and crannies, but that kind of leaves a little bit of shadow in there. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see how that's looking. So, so yeah, that's sort of coverage I'm getting. The windows, I'm going to, I'll spray black in those with a little bit of black um, or dark grey uh, as a final step. Um, and that goes for the whole building. Oh, on the back. And again, you can see I didn't go too hard down on the bottom. I also didn't bother about full coverage everywhere. Um, kind of, uh, but I say I'll put some weathering and details along the bottom with an airbrush strip or something darker along that brick stripe that they've got along the bottom of the building before finally doing the the base plate in a dark slate grey. This whole plate is going to be like a concrete grey 
tarmacy grey. And I did put some tiny bits of uh, gravel matches just to make the place look a little bit messy rather than just a completely flat um, shape on there. And I sprayed this little box there, but I didn't do the whole lot, just went on there quickly. All this detail work on here as well, on the side, we'll get um, some washes and I'll like paint in different wires and things, but try and be economical with it. I don't want to like a candy store stripe of different colors and things on there. Um, but I will pick out some details. And then just the bigger piece. Yeah, I didn't have enough paint really on uh, in the brush left over, but you can see uh, I didn't go too heavy on these fans, which are from the scene in the UK, um, because I'll do those in a different color, sort of metal color. And I've already going direct onto the, those because they'll be they'll get painted a separate color, the logo on there. Uh, so so yeah. I mean, that's how quite quick it is in terms of, I mean, you saw that probably took 20 minutes at most to do the base. And every layer of extra paint that you put on um, is going to be even quicker because once you've got the base coat, then you're just highlighting up around the edges. Um, yeah, and it's important also with airbrushing is that you're not going to give up fully on the dry brushing little details on because you will do that as well finally just to pick out highlights on the edges of things uh, when it's finally done. So that's it. I mean, really, I find, I don't know if any, but there was really some ad other airbrushes, yeah, Craig, um, there as well. And, um, oh, new comment. Hello, Keith. Hello, Oscar. Yeah, so um, zoom out again so you can see what's going on there. I've just left the frame on just like nothing. Yeah. I think that's in focus. Yeah, but what you find with when you start doing airbrushing, everything's about the prep. Um, so you spend days and days and days getting everything primed, coated, finished and detailed. And then it is really quite quick. That whole building done in like 10, 15 minutes there at most. Um, and then the next shade up uh, won't be much longer. Um, and then it's back on again with any detail areas as well where you want to do them in different colors. Like definitely this, this metal base plate um, uh, will get a different color airbrushed in there as well, either a metallic or, um, or I'll paint the metallic on there quickly as well. So it's really just, um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time masking things off. I know myself from experience, I can go in really close with that airbrush um, along edges like this. So when I finally do the base, I, I will cut it back in like you are with any kind of paint job, really. I'll be able to cut back in along the edge with quite fine control um, because the airbrush is quite a, a, a nice small nozzle on it. So that's it. Um, didn't want to go on too long tonight because um, it's late anyway. It's quarter to 10 over here in the UK. I've got work tomorrow. And um, what I'll do before I do another video is I'll give them all their base color and then I'll come back Go back to the main picture, actually. That one, is it going to move? Yes. So, yeah, I'll come back to the mall and do a um, uh, base color on everything, then one highlight, and then I'll come back and then I'll start doing some details and I'll probably do a video of that while, I was, while I'm doing it um, so that you can see the progress as I'm going along. So thanks to everybody to uh, signing in. Um, Keith is a bit late in, yeah, always late to the uh, party. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. Anybody can come in at any time and just hopefully you're, there's some usefulness in showing off some of these bits and pieces. Okay, cheers. Thanks for listening. I'm signing off now. Bye.